Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. On this episode of the Buyer's Guide, we've got something, well, it's different. It's pretty big. It's a Jeep and it's by Rock Hobby. I have reviewed a Jeep by Rock Hobby and it was my favorite one of the FMS, Rock Hobby, and Easy RC vehicles. So I'm very excited about this one here. I have nothing in military scheme, nor do I really have any Jeeps. So this will be interesting. This has that double-sided foam box, which means in terms of storage, transporting, this is gonna be easy. I'm sorry that this box is huge. So to remove it won't be the easiest thing in the world. It is abundantly clear here that they expect you to keep the box. What are these? I, I don't know what these things are here. These are latches. Oh, holy cow. Oh my God, that's huge. Are there ones on this side too? No, there's not. Oh, this is hinged. I'm going to zoom out a bit here. So the box is actually, look at that. Okay, um, calling all RC car manufacturers from now on, in the event of an RTR, or probably in the likelihood that the parts for a regular RC car will fit in here, this is fantastic. I love the fact that it, I'm sorry, not to beat a dead horse here, but that's awesome. Let's go ahead and remove the car. Uh, first, oh my God, these are, these are fabric. Little zip ties holding things in place, nicely packaged. Yeah, let's right up. This is heavy. Not as heavy as you'd think, but it's definitely heavy. Down here we have a sizable, look at this. This is a very sizable instruction manual. I'm hoping that it goes through the build of the vehicle. And I'm sorry, am I seeing? No, we don't have an open diff. This is going to be a spool. So we are seeing all the part numbers here for replacement pieces, oil filled shocks multiple languages. The remote seems small. So very similar to this here that I've got. This is a uh, turbo racing. It has that same style of latching, kind of slide and latch group here, which is kind of cool. What I'm not seeing are that many channels. Oh, here it was channel three, reverse, channel four, endpoint adjustments, channel three, endpoint adjustments. Steering throttle, and here's channel four. That is everything in there. What a, just a well thought out, sorry. What a well thought out package. We are gonna have to read the instructions at some point. Let's move the box. No ax. You know, I'm, I'm not that into weathering stuff, but man, oh man, would this look good weathered. The tires look like they wouldn't be soft, but they are quite plush, I have to admit. Man, that is a spongy. That is really, really soft. You have, there's a canvas top for this, isn't there? Yes. Yes, there is. I think this might be an aftermarket piece. I'm not certain. It came separately with me. But yeah, here is a canvas top for the top of the car. Let's remove some of these little zip ties. I think wipers. Yeah. So we're going to go freestyle here. And I apologize if you can't see some of the text, but look at all of that detail here in these stickers on the dash. It's well done because the dash isn't particularly detailed and I don't suspect that the actual one is either, but just adding these little stickers bumps up credibility quite a lot. Gear shifter, I suspect low range, four wheel, Steering wheel, I half expected this to turn the tires. Pedals down there, I only see two pedals. Again, I'm not a Jeep guy, but I'm pretty sure there's a missing clutch there. Do these move? These do not move, these are plastic. So we'll see how the top is held in place later. 
some nice details back here, all the red lighting. Looking closely at the truck, we can see all the detail that went into the little straps that hold the hatchet and the shovel. The shovel, as well as the hatchet, are molded in multiple pieces, which is really cool. That's why we're getting the different colors. Front and rear hubs, I, from what I can tell, because I can't get them to unscrew just by turning them, I think you're going to have to remove all five of the lugs, which will show then the standard wheel nut, which will be mounted to a standard hex drive axle. You can see that right there, as well as here at the rear, just a regular hex drive. I like this little headlight right there, or spotlight. Get your grill, which we'll have to do a wash on. And I just can't get over the little seats. That's fantastic. I wish the bumper had a little bit of a better mount. This is exactly the same as the WPL Land Cruiser, the early one. The front mount was just gummy. This is a real rubber tire. Um, the hood appears to open. There we go. So there is a fake engine in there. A little bit of detailing, and that'll look that'll look uh, believable, I think. Where's the battery go? I just assumed the battery would be under here. Let's perhaps look under the car. Oh, there it is. It's right there. So here is our... I forget what this style of battery is called. I don't have that. Body pins right here. Oh. Time to get that instruction manual out. Back here, there are two body pins. One's right here. My giant hands can't reach. This is the biggest body clip I've ever seen. And allegedly, you just lift. Oh my god. <laughs> let's, let's get that in the frame here. And there it is. Look at that. Access to pretty much everything. This is interesting. You've got your gear reduction from the motor to a transfer case to an outdrive and an outdrive. But check it out. There's another outdrive. This probably spins at the same speed as this input shaft. So it's reversible or you can attach it to who knows what else. A blender. In the meantime, we're going to drop a 2S battery here, but I don't have this. So we're going to void the warranty. In the meantime, this is a pretty standard receiver. It is three channel. I don't know what that third channel is for. There's a silver right here. Um, I've got a bunch of these ESCs. I'll get a closer look in a second. Let's go ahead and modify this and get a 2S battery in here. So I just wanted to look a little bit inside here. We have a 35 turn motor. It looks bigger than a 540, perhaps a 550. It's quite a lot longer. I was also confused as to the steering on the car since I didn't see a splitter, but actually it is. It splits directly at the port. So turning left and right, I'll try and get it from here. The body is staying up with this rod, which goes in here and up there. The plastics for the axles appear to be some kind of a composite. Chassis is C-channel. Hard to tell. I would say probably some kind of steel. Plastic bumper mounts. The little four-link mounts, all the little captured ball ends. Those are all plastic. The links themselves are metal. The joints are all metal, which is really nice. They've done a really good job. Shock bodies appear to be plastic. Front steering servo. And I'm just annoyed with these lights. Let's do something about the lights. I just realized something. The headlights are there. But what I didn't see was this headlight. Perhaps it's a searchlight, or some sort of a spotlight, a signal light. I don't know what it is, but it's on. That's pretty cool. Speaking of tangents, I added lights. Got some here at the back. Uh, added the ones here for the signals at the front. They're just on, off, nothing major. Since the body's off the car, it was easy enough to remove. There were just two shank style screws right here and the entire body came off had to unplug the steering servo as well as the light but that was all it took i'm also going to install this remote switch because you know ampro 
So now just excuse me while I, I don't know if I zip tie all this up. Literally every car I have, I do this to. In all honesty, the reason why I went on this tangent here is a lot of my reviews tend to do stuff like this. And it's simply to differentiate my content. Anybody can do a review, and that's not really what I'm into. I like to modify things and change stuff and make things better. And However, in many cases, they end up worse. But that's not the point. The point is I like to play with my stuff and make things a little different. And that's why I've done this. I also noticed that I, there was really nothing to strap the batteries down. So I happen to have this one here in the drawer. I'm just gonna use that. I removed the battery housing out to run these through. Just note that you can see it's not quite intended for this. So the strap goes around the battery mounts. So just make sure those are clear as you strap it down. Okay, with those in there, I decided it'd be a good idea to try and fit a hard case 2S battery. So I've got this guy. I'll just slot that in there. And crossing my fingers that my added wiring didn't mess anything up, which it probably has. I'll just route this out of the way and I think this is going to go down. Yep. Hard case 2S absolutely fits. I whipped up this adapter here so we can try it out. First we can put batteries in the radio. There's a little diagram right there that will show us exactly their orientation. Little clip slots in here just like that and all of this will go in like there so we turn this on okay that is on let's go to the car lift the back toss that in there we go we can address wire routing later i'll just plug straight in here it looks like it's already turned on because the car is doing things I did notice, by the way, that the switch, yeah, it's right here, off, on. Oh, it unscrewed. I see why it was spinning around. Oh, there's a servo there. Nice. Turn the radio on. Boy, that steering is surprisingly good. Let's see if we go forward. These lights seem very dim. I suppose that wouldn't be very accurate six volt lights. To reverse any of these settings here, we'll use a steering as an example. We'll press and hold reverse and crank to the right. See what happened? So now you turn right, it goes left. So turn, press. Same with the throttle. The instruction manual is showing you the specifications on the WB1060 brushed ESC. I've got several of these and I've always liked them. So if you wanna see what the ESC is, just pause. The instructions are calling out to install the wipers, but I want to paint them first. Also to install the rear canvas. This just slides straight out. I'll do the same for this side here. Okay, well, there we go. Just so you know, I lied. This just tells us how to set up the bracket, but not how to put the top up. So in typical Ampro fashion, I got to figure out how to do it. What I know is that it goes like this. And these little holes here tell me that this is the front. So something like that. This hooks up here. That holds the canvas top in the middle. Um, this will go in the back corner to hold it all together. So we drop it in here. One, two, this goes forward. These all should hook on quite painstakingly. The back will slot down here, run the Velcro up. I'm making this up as I go, by the way. 
Okay, so that goes like that, possibly. The same to that side. And then at the front, like I said, we just have to clip on all 3,000 of these. And it should, in theory, stay. I have to admit, this arm is being bent a little bit here. And it feels like this should be more vertical. If you push back here, it pulls the windshield back. I'm pretty sure I have it installed right. Now that the lights are installed, we'll just push the channel three button here. Sweet. And because I wired the headlights into that same switch, there we go. The blackout for the turn signals is really cool. I still wanna drive the truck, but we're not done yet. Here we have the trailer for that Jeep. That is it's just, I mean, it's just, everything's gigantic. There's that. And there we go. Underneath, we have to attach the tongue. And I believe, yeah, it's gonna go like that. Yeah, just like that. Wow, there are actually threaded inserts inside these pickup points there. You've got four M3 screws, most likely M3 anyway. And yeah, put those in. Let's just take a look at this for a moment. Little decals here denoting data plates. That's very nice. We do have reflectors. I don't think this does. No, that's just clipped into place. The lights can be illuminated from the, it looks like it. Yeah, they can be illuminated from back there, which of course I'm going to do. Look how nice the leaf springs look. These are individual leaves, all held in there with this U, with these U-bolts. I mean, it is, uh, they're probably not U-bolts. No, it's not. These are just M3 threaded screws into a molded piece that looks like a U-bolt, but still, this is really nicely done. Same supple tires, a big, tow hitch all made out of metal oh i got the little plastic safety straps look at this the chain is metal the little hook is unfortunately plastic but this looks really good and then it has a little yeah this goes over there the little stand we are not done yet here we have a machine gun okay Got the little ammo box. Good, we can store our lipos in there when we're done. A mount of some sort. This is cool. This little screw's gonna go in there to hold all that together. This is, I think this is the piece that goes here at the back. Yeah, this will go in. I don't know how I know that. Oh my God, look at this little thing here. It's all in this like little nicely lined box. I mean, look how nice this box is. This piece, I don't know. There's a hole there. It goes there. Oh, yeah, I think you pull this back to load it. And then we got to get the gun. Got to get the bullets out. There's a little hinge right here. So this, oh, there it goes. This goes up like that. You see that little round piece goes in there. It's held in place. Boom. There we go. We have a couple of bits of hardware in here. This longer one, I suspect, will go straight through here. Now, there's a second variation of that gun. This one over here, and this one has to be detailed yourself. But otherwise, it comes with the exact same hardware. You can see that the bullets aren't painted or anything. The gun's not painted, and it doesn't have that lovely case. So there's a little hole between the seats that the gun will thread into. And you use the flat-headed screw, and you've got this little basket right here, and this holds the ammo box. I think it goes in this orientation, but I mean, it could also go the other way around. I suppose at this point, the passenger won't be here. It goes somewhere like this. Someone who's more up to military history will certainly know better than me. The next thing we have to do is hook the trailer up. This is the little mount that it came with. And it's this little plastic mount and the trailer will very, very easily just go right there go down and uh, fall right out. You have this optional hitch, which is all metal, beautifully machined, as you can see over here. This will, yeah, that'll screw in right there. 
just like that. It also has an undercut right there. So when you do pull the trailer back, it doesn't automatically go over the top. So let me thread that in. And now with the metal hitch, we'll lift that up, drop that in, and a lot less likelihood that to come out. These, so I don't actually see a place to mount these. That's too bad. Well, after adding some holes, sweet. Now they're in. I did a couple little things here to the car. Painted the gear shift and the four wheel drive and low range gear selectors. Came out pretty nice, just a, just a little bit of paint addition. Painted up some little knobs here, details here and on the latches there. Really minor stuff that I think, you know, made it look a little bit better. Got the little wipers all painted up there, which apparently I forgot to glue in, but nonetheless, they are hanging out there. Enough with the talking about this. So let's take it for a spin and see how it goes. I'm going to say, I don't think I'm going to buy any more. Oh. 
And look, 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 look at this thing. Why, I mean, why is it doing all this? It shouldn't be. Because it's just, it's like you say, it's like a little crappy scale of I don't know if you'll get up there, but this, I'll show you the line that I take. Yeah, I think it's to the right, but I just want to see if it'll do. Temporary engineering, right? Yes. Right. <laughs> no worries. Come on. Yeah, you know, it was said, and then they said, oh, it's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. I did. I crashed it. It really is. I kind of fell for this thing when I saw it just driving along on flat land with some small pebbles here and there because its bulk, the basically the, the bulk of the body, made it so that the body effectively didn't move and all you saw were the tires just going up and down like this. And I thought it looked absolutely fantastic. But it doesn't matter what I think. The question is, what do you think and do you want one? Well, there's a couple of schools of thought there. The biggest problem with this, I think, is its scale. It's kind of out of place if you have got a one-tenth scale grouping of RC cars. Its significantly larger body proportions are kind of kept at bay by its pretty much one-tenth scale wheelbase. Anybody who has an SCX-6, I would say get it because they're pretty much in line with each other. In fact, I came across one as we were doing the filming for this thing here. If you are into military vehicles, it's going to be pretty hard pressed to ignore this thing, especially if you like GI Joes. Now here we, uh, you know, Barbie certainly had a great time there driving this little guy, but if you have something more appropriate for this, like a larger G.I. Joe collection. I even know they made a large G.I. Joe Jeep. Well, guess what? Now you can get yet another big G.I. Joe Jeep that is fully operational. If you are looking for something with a larger scale on a smaller wheelbase, this might be something good for you as well, because again, it is not taking up the giant space that an SCX-6 would, it pretty much fits in that realm of one tenth scale, even though its body is quite a lot larger. A downside of it is that I found the body was really, really easy to get caught up on things, mainly because of how much it hangs over the wheels. And I think that's just the result of its scaleness. Usually if this was a one tenth scale vehicle, you'd put larger wheels and tires and raise it up. And perhaps that's something that you might want to do as well. But I did find that the, Jerry can mounts here at the rear, the rear fenders, side skirts. They all wanted to get caught on things, and I really didn't want to scratch the body. If you do want something like this for scale off-roading, it probably would be best to change wheels and tires to something a little bit more beefy, and perhaps ones that would stick out more to help protect the body and not get as caught up on things. If you want to keep in line with your 110 scale collection, then this is not going to be for you since it's a lot larger. Its price point is also pretty high, but you are getting quite a lot of bang for your buck. The car's chassis is really, really good. The suspension is really scale. The detail is out of this world, but it certainly is not an inexpensive vehicle, nor is all the additional upgrades like the top, the rear trailer hitch, and the trailer as well. Not to mention the two variations of the automatic weapon here on the vehicle. I have to admit this thing really did surprise me. I was not expecting what I got when it arrived. I initially was pretty indifferent despite the detail, but driving this thing, I just about fell for it. So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting. And I know I did a little bit of extra on here with the lights and 
the painting and the little details, but it's just showing you how simply you can make something that's otherwise fantastic even better with a couple of little modifications. Thank you all so much for watching. Links to this vehicle are in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time. Thank you.